Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy in communion with him to love humanity and to live in harmony with all of his creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation. And so we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended for us. Also by our own sin we grieve our Father, who does not desire to come. Also by our own sin we grieve our Father, who does not desire us to come under his judgment, but to turn to him and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works works of love, the dis disciplines of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking our Father for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Most merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ, we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. We confess to you, Lord our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of others. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and to our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack 
of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Amen. It is at this point in the service that I would normally impose ashes on your forehead. And I still want you to hear the words that I would say as I reached out and touched your forehead. So hear this, beloved, beloved of God. Remember that you are dust, and to dust, you shall return. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and the passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore him to grant us true repentance, and by his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do on this day, that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let us pray the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you despise nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that truly repenting of our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, we may obtain from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is taken from the second chapter of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? There ends the first reading. The second reading today is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine with love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see we are alive, as punished, and yet are not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. There ends the second reading. Hear this reading. from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces at, so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Amen. So it's Ash Wednesday. This time last year, we gathered at St. Paul's. We experienced the imposition of ashes as a shared ministry. In a short few weeks after that, we entered into the pandemic with stay-at-home orders, with quarantines. This time last year, we were trying to figure out what this new illness meant for us, the impacts it was going to have. And a year later, I think we still wrestle with some of the same questions. But here's the interesting thing. We confessed a lot of things. And that confession was from the LBW, a hymnal that came out in the 70s. And many of those words that we confessed, those sins that we confessed, are just as true today as they were when they were written. And maybe some of them are even more true now. Our lack of concern for the creation and for those that follow us. Our indifference towards injustice. Hmm. It makes me wonder. It makes me think have we really confessed those sins? Or do we say that on this day because that's what we say? And then on top of that, we get this message from Jesus in the gospel reading about, <clears throat> about prayer, about giving offerings or um, Fasting, some of the things that are traditionally seen as the um, 
disciplines of Lent that are more focused. We focus a little bit more on prayer. Maybe some fast from certain things or during certain times of the day, during this time of year. Some may increase their offerings either to the church or to other organizations. There's other disciplines that people have picked up. But I wonder, while this message is good for us to hear during Lent, are we hearing this message? Have we heard this message the last year? You see, it was the passage where Jesus talks about praying and how the hypocrites love to go into the synagogues and pray so that they may be seen praying. Now this past year, many have not stepped into their worship spaces at all. Some have stepped into it just a handful of times. Others started worshiping as soon as they were able. And I wonder why that was. And I wonder if it is because, because we still have some of those same tendencies Jesus is calling out. The question is, why do we go to our worship spaces to pray? You see, this past year has been an exercise in learning how to practice what's called piety or spiritual practice, worshiping God from home through digital means, through personal means that you have developed over the course of this pandemic. And I wonder if part of the push to return back to worship spaces is because we have some of those same tendencies Jesus is calling out. We also have to ask ourselves why we felt so driven to returning to our worship spaces. Now, there are reasons like it's where I am fed. It is where I am renewed. It is where I am motivated to go out and spread the gospel message that I have been given, which are good and holy and necessary. And, and I know there are people That's not the reason they felt motivated to get back to church. Maybe they felt motivated to get back to church because that's just what we have to do. That's just what I do. It's part of my routine. It's where I see other people. And those are okay reasons. But I think Jesus is telling us those can't be our primary motivating reasons. Our primary motivation must be to worship and glorify God, to draw closer to God, in order that we may go out and meet the needs of the world. <laughs> I've said it before in sermons, but part of that has to do with the difference between disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, and church folk. Church folk are good folk. But oftentimes, maybe their relationship is more focused on a building or the people in the building than it is of drawing closer to God. You see, we can draw closer to God 
whether we're in a building or not, whether we gather as community physically or not. There are things like prayer and fasting. Jesus tells us when we pray to go into our rooms, go into our closets, lock the door and pray in secret. That is when we can get closer to God. And there is power in communal prayer. Don't get me wrong. There are good reasons to gather as one. But if that is the only place where we pray, I think that's where Jesus asks us a question. Are we Jesus people? Are we church folk? The spiritual practices of Lent are intended to draw us closer to God. Others should not be aware of them. And then, much like going into worship spaces can be a sign of being a good person. We want people to see that we have gone to church, and that is good. We do. That is part of our witness. It's the motivation behind it that Jesus is asking us to explore. The same is true of when we do give up things for Lent. That's a practice that the church has been doing for a long time. And Jesus, in his in the section of the gospel, says, look, when you do that, don't make it so that you get grumpy and angry and, you know, all the things. So when I have given up soda in the past for Lent, people knew. And looking back at it, I wonder if I was more focused on people knowing I was doing something than the reason I was doing it, the motivation, what, what it was intended to do. What, why did I do this? Was it to show that I was a better person or more Christian than someone else because I'm giving this up and I'm telling everyone? Or did I do that in order to draw closer to God? If I'm honest, it was probably more the latter than the former. No. More the more wanting people to know that I'm better. So we have to ask ourselves in this past year, what has been our motivation? Have we taken on things that allowed us to grow closer to God? Because when we confess like we did, when we ask for repentance, when we ask for forgiveness, we have to ask ourselves, are we doing this because we recognize our shortcomings? And those were some powerful words, right? Maybe there are a few words or phrases in there that you didn't necessarily like. But I bet you still ask for forgiveness of those things because that's what we're supposed to do. Well, that's part of the question. And it's hard. I want you to hear me say this. It has been a hard year. We have longed for many things. We have missed many things. We have had to give up many things, and that is hard. And I hear a lot of talk about returning back to normal. Well, our normal has a lot of that stuff that we just confessed. Our normal maybe recognizes or looks similar to the things that Jesus is calling out, or at least it did. And really, can we return back to normal after almost half a million people in our country have died from a virus or from illnesses associated with the virus? Is there really a return to normal after we have experienced such a traumatic event? 
let alone all the other things that happened in 2020, the past year. Unfortunately, I don't think we can. So maybe this Lenten time, we need to commit to prayer, really establish our prayer practices and go out. Or no, go in. Spend that time in prayer in order to build up our own spiritual strength, in order to commune with God and be with the Spirit so that we can be part of going out into the world and proclaiming, come Easter, the risen Lord, the grace, peace, love, mercy that Jesus gives us. Amen.
Let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and for all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit especially the families of Reese and Nancy Grahams, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those who's journeying toward baptism and call us to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. May God speaking, spoken, and inspiring bless you, unbind you, and preserve you in love and peace. Amen. Go in peace, knowing that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thanks be 